I'm Julian Gonese, PhD student in the Cluster of Excellence here in Foro and in the Psychology Department of the University of Oldenburg. I welcome you to my talk, Improving the Classification of Noise Haters and Distortion Haters with Mixture, Latent, State and Trait, Autoregressive Modeling. Noisy rooms are among the most difficult environments for hearing aid users, and noise reduction algorithms are an essential part of the hearing aid, as they aim at improving listening comfort by reducing the annoyance of surrounding noise. However, increasing listening comfort comes at the expense of speech naturalness, as noise reduction processing artifacts introduce a certain amount of distortion into the speech signal with comparable hearing thresholds have shown large variability in their listening preferences for noise reduction settings, with distortion haters or noise um, reduction haters preferring weak noise reduction to keep signal distortions to a minimum, and noise haters or noise reduction lovers preferring aggressive noise reduction despite the presence of more distortions. Latest studies also identified an additional intermediate category. These preferences have shown to be stable within person over time and under similar listening conditions, with stability over three consecutive repetitions and at a one week and one year test retest period, and over listening scenarios in a highly controlled laboratory settings. These preferences have also been shown to correlate with speech perception. But can we infer full stability of listening preferences with a single test retest? about potential day-to-day -day fluctuations. Indeed, we know that other neuropsychological processes, like hearing itself, fluctuate over time within the individual. And would it be possible to design a mobile measure of noise reduction strength preference to facilitate repeated assessment and to measure this trade-off outside the lab? Our goal is to improve and further differentiate the classification of noise haters and distortion haters by modeling longitudinal dynamics of listening preferences measured by a novel mobile task. That is why we designed a mobile measure of listening preferences for noise versus distortion and included it in a larger online ecological momentary assessment study with 169 older adults with subjective reports of hearing difficulties but not using hearing aids. They participated in a three-week study where at baseline, together with various questionnaires and tests, they performed our task three consecutive times and this task was also repeated in the two following weeks, mornings and evenings, for a total of 20 repetitions. As you can see, at the longitudinal measures of um, hearing ability, we see that 74% of participants had average good hearing performance and only 3% poor hearing performance. The task included three listening conditions, each of them displayed in the form of a slider with nine discrete values, and the participant was asked to move the cursor to the right as much as needed to understand the speech with little effort. About the three conditions, we had first a simple linear gain scenario where each stimulus was an also sentence in background noise with increasing SNR, a trade-off task with gaining listening effort at the expense of sound quality in a general SNR range, and again the trade-off task but in an adaptive SNR range, based on the individual answer on the first slider. We then derived a measure of listening preferences by computing the difference in SNR between slider 1, linear gain, and slider 3, subject-dependent trade-off. And we would then classify noise haters as having delta SNR close to zero and distortion haters showing positive delta SNR. And here is again an example of participant answers at baseline and longitudinal time points. Our research questions. First, we want to evaluate trait consistency and state specificity of listening preferences. That is, is the trait fully stable or does it fluctuate over time? Then we aim at a data-driven categorization of noise haters and distortion haters. First, let us focus on the first research question. According to the latent state and trait theory, an observed variable can be decomposed into 
a latent trait variable, the attribute of a person, in our case, habitual listening preferences, and a state residual variable, the attribute of a person in a situation, so momentarily fluctuations in preferences. And here, trait and state variable together constitute a person's true score. What we did is to first implement a latent state and trait model for our measure delta SNR across the 20 longitudinal time points. What we saw is that average state-related variance amounts to 0.78 for the 20 longitudinal measures taken into account. This indicates that almost 79% of the variance observed in the individual listening preferences across the days is attributable to situational fluctuation. Then, as a second research question, we want a data-driven categorization of noise haters and distortion haters, first based on their habitual listening preferences, so the trait means, to replicate previous studies that did not include longitudinal data, and then we will try to further differentiate classes when taking this large observed state variability into account. We will do so by extending our previous model to a mixture latent state and trait model. So we assume that within each class, a latent state and trait model holds. So we try to identify latent subgroups of people that differ in some specified model parameters. First, however, we want to identify classes that differ only for the trait means. We estimated a 2, 3, and 4 class solution and evaluated them with respect to model fit, entropy, and interpretability. The 3 class solution seems more interpretable in the light of previous findings, and we see that it identifies a class with mean trait close to zero, which might refer to a noise hater profile, another class with higher trait mean that might indicate the distortion hater, and a majority class that resembles the intermediate class as previously found in literature. And what is also interesting to note is that the distribution is similar to what was found in laboratory studies. We then further differentiated the majority class or intermediate class by modeling its data with a mixture latent state and trait model to identify further latent subgroups that differ with respect to their patterns of stability and variability. Here, the two-class solution is um, nicely interpretable with yet good model fit and entropy, and we see that it identifies one majority class with low variance, including participants with more stable listening preferences, and another class with higher state-related variance and higher trait mean. So to conclude, we saw that individual listening preferences are not fully stable and there is a considerable amount of state-related variance. When categorizing individuals, we saw that their habitual listening preferences differentiate them in the three classes previously seen in literature, but we could further differentiate individuals based on their stable versus unstable listening preferences. And we could also measure listening preferences with good within person consistency outside the lab. With this, I thank you for listening and I'm looking forward to a nice discussion either now in the Q&A or at any time via email.